All righty, let's get started. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on the first Thursday of February. We are excited for our webinar um, for today. I'm Olivia Rios, Director of Operations and Programs at the Los Angeles Latino Chamber of Commerce. Have you ever wondered the difference of all the certifications available to you with LA County and the state of California? Well, today's webinar, Demystifying Certification, will help you understand the difference between the top three certifications for small businesses. Our subject matter expert is Jack Ochoa from Infinity GPS, and he's here with us today to provide you with critical information that could help you determine which certification is right for your business. Mr. Ochoa has been in the business and community leader and is dedicated to supplier diversity and inclusion, and he's been in that realm for over 25 years. He understands diversity and inclusion and is an advocate for small businesses. But before we start, if you could be mindful and please mute yourself, ask questions in the chat box. This session is also interactive, so you can raise your hand and we will address your question. And remember that the session is being recorded and will be available tomorrow afternoon on our website. So Jack, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Olivia. I really appreciate it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna jump into my screen. So Olivia, can you give me a thumbs up that everybody can see my screen? Awesome, all right. So, so today we're gonna be demystifying and what I often coin as clearing the fog of certification. Because yes, I understand it can be confusing at times. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and jump to the very next slide. So certification comes in many, many flavors, okay? So I wanna be clear is it comes in a lot of different flavors. There is corporate certification that you can achieve. There is public utility certification that you could achieve. There is state government, there is local government, and yes, our friends of the federal government have their own separate certification. So right there alone, you can see why it's confusing. So I get it, it can be confusing at times. So today, by the end of this, I promise you this, you won't be confused. You'll go, okay, cool. This is the way we're gonna do it and this is what we're gonna push through it. So with that said, um, we're gonna go ahead and go to a couple slides. So a couple of the buzzwords that we're hearing these days is supplier diversity. And you heard it in the intro when Olivia introduced myself is, what does that mean? So a diverse business is owned and operated by an individual or a group of individuals that, are, that represent an underserved or underrepresented group. So who are those groups? Minorities, African-American, Latino, Pacific Islander, or Native American. So that's that particular group, right? Women, yes, for the ladies, there's that's also considered a underrepresented group. So yes, women certification, also known as a WBE certification. Um, LGBT, I know it's something new that on that business enterprise that recently came up, I would say within the last five years. So now the LGBT community also has a certification that they can be achieved. For the veterans, and you may know a friend or you may know a veteran, I'm a veteran myself, is that there is a veteran certification that also can be achieved. But I want you to kind of be mindful of this one thing. I hope this makes sense. Is that all businesses start as small. Now, I'm going to mention a couple of small businesses that will blow your mind in a minute. Coca-Cola. Now, you're probably asking yourself, they're not a small business. They were when they first started, right? They were a small business way back in the day. Um, another little tiny company that we all shop at called Amazon. You're like, no way, those guys are not small. Yes, they were 20 years ago. But we forget that all businesses, whether they fall into one of these diverse groups, they all start as small. And we forget that step, is that they all start somewhere. So just remember that when you walk into a room that yes, you can be as big as those big companies, but you have to start with some, some steps. So what does that mean? So let's look at what are some of the corporations that have a supplier diversity program? And most of them are all Fortune 500 company. I selected only the companies here in California. You'll notice some names here, Wells Fargo, Disney, Hewlett-Packard, uh, Visa, 
AECOM, huge construction company, uh, PG&E, Molina Health, you're like, these guys have a supplier diversity program. They don't talk about it, but they do have one because everybody is focused on supplier inclusion. So they all have what they call a supplier diversity program. So as you're taking notes, I would take note of that. If you happen to know somebody in one of these companies, you're like, hmm, who's the supplier diversity manager in your company? You want to get to know that person so that as opportunities come up, they can include you in the projects. So now let's talk about the big guys in the room that take supplier diversity extremely, extremely serious. And there are two local companies here in LA County. One of them is this little tiny company called Sempra Energy, also known as the gas company. So you're like, they're not tiny. They're a huge company. Yes, but they have a supplier diversity program. They're, they're the other guys that are in the area that also take supplier diversity extremely serious is other little tiny company called Edison. Yes, Edison has a supplier diversity program and they are laser focused on battling it out between the guys that are above them. So these two, the gas company Edison are always fighting out to be in that number one spot. Now, typically their supplier diversity numbers hover around 35, 40%. So as you can see, they're very committed to supplier diversity. So they're always a friend of helping minorities, veterans and women and LGBT in their uh, procurement and their buying. So they, again, they all have a supplier diversity manager. You wanna get to know that person fairly quickly. So now you're thinking, okay, Jack, but I've heard of all these other certifications and we're gonna cover them all right now. So one of them is the National Minority Supplier Development Council. So that's a national organization that will get your business certified as a minority owned business. You're like, okay, cool. I fall into most categories. There is, as I mentioned, through the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce, you can also get your certification as part of the LGBT community. Okay, cool. For the ladies in the room, there is an organization called WeBank that actually will certify a woman-owned business. So you have the one for minorities, you have the one for LGBT, and you have the one for women. So you're like, hmm, okay, I want to get one of these. Now, in a minute, I'm going to explain why one is more, more, more complex than others. And that's what I want you to understand is that, yes, these are out there on a national basis. These are for national, like if you're going to do business with Honda or Walmart or just some big company, they expect you to have one of these. So now what will happen is that the federal government has a whole separate certification to do federal contracting. They also, they also have many groups, minorities, women, veterans. So very similar, you're like, oh, wait a minute, that's a whole separate certification. So you're like, but do they recognize any of the ones above? No they have their own lane for certification. So national minority, LGBT, women, federal government. So you're probably asking yourself, this is why it's confusing. And so I'm about to show you that it gets a little more confusing, but by the end of this, you're gonna go, okay, let me pick the easy one. Because some of these up here, they're not easy. These are a little bit harder to do and they take a lot of time to complete. So what are some of the local ones that you can maybe consider looking at? One of them is the one at Metro. So Metro, LA County Metro, um, Orange County Transit, San Diego Transit have a program called the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Certification. Again, different certification. And no, they don't recognize any of the ones listed above. Okay, just so we're clear. They don't recognize them. They also have some cities, not all cities, have a minority business enterprise certification. One of them for us locally is the city of LA. The other one that does that is San Francisco. New York City, I believe, does that as well. So some cities have a minority certification program that your business can apply for. Now, there is another one out there, and that's for the veterans. So the veterans, um, the SBA recently took over the veteran certification. So if you happen to know a veteran or you are a veteran yourself, the SBA now certifies businesses as veteran-owned. Now, there is this one little tiny place 
called California. California has its own certification program. So you're probably asking yourself, so wait a minute, let me take a pause here. You have national minority, you have LGBT, you have women, you have disadvantaged business with the transit, you have federal, you have veterans, you have minority. What is this one with the state? What's that about? So now let's look at why that is, okay? So I'm sure you guys all know that California is the fourth largest economy in the world. Four. That's not small. That's pretty big. So now you're like, okay, that's pretty big, California. This little tiny place called LA County. LA County is the 17th largest economy in the world. 17. By the way, we're bigger than Saudi Arabia. I want you to think about that. LA County is bigger than Saudi Arabia, economically speaking, okay? Now, why is that? Well, we have 88 cities that make up the county, City of LA, Long Beach, uh, Santa Clarita, Pomona. So a lot of cities make up that. But we also have the big five. So who are the big five? The big five include LAX, Los Angeles Airport, you have LADW, you have the LA County uh, Transit Authority, you have the fourth largest airport in the world, LAX, and you have the two largest ports, the Port of Long Beach and the Port of LA. So you're like, is it no wonder why we're so big? This is why. Because again, we are, we are an economy on our own, right? Let's just be honest. So that's what I want you to see is, now what do these two entities have in common? These two have in common that they both have a small business program. So you're probably asking yourself, well, wait a minute, but we just talked about these other ones that are minority focused, but California is a different beast. In 1996, we as Californians ended affirmative action. So the focus shifted over to getting certified as a small business. So the state has a program for small business. The county has a program for small business. The city of LA has a program for small business. So does Long Beach and so does Pasadena. So, and um, so does LAUSD and as uh, well Metro. So you're like, well, wait a minute, all of these agencies have a small business program. So where do we start? And I think that's what we're gonna cover here in a few seconds. So DGS is where you start. So the Department of General Services is the first and easiest certification to achieve as a small business. So we're going to break it down on a very high level, right? So you remember, I, meant, I mentioned that on the, on the federal side, they have their own certification program. So they, only the federal government has that. They basically do their own thing. Local government, however, uses DGS. So, this, so you have, whether it's a small city, it's a local city, it's a county, or a school district or water district, they will accept this Department of General Services certification as kind of like almost legitimizing that your business is in fact a small business. So I hope that makes sense. So at this point, because there are going to be questions at the end of the slide. So we're going to pause at the end of the slide because I want to make sure you, if I we need to clear it up, this is the time, okay? So we're going to start with this quadrant up here, small business certification, right? By the way, the easiest one to do only requires three to five documents and you only have to be in business one day. Think about that. One day in business, revenue under $5 million, which would pretty much be every business in California. So you're like, okay, well, who, who already has a program? LA County. LA County has $1 billion that they're trying to spend with certified small businesses. Los Angeles Unified School District they are spending about $600 million with certified small businesses. Los Angeles World Airport, the Port of Long Beach, the Port of LA, DWP, the Department of Water and Power, City of Pasadena, City of Long Beach. There are many that have this focus on small business. Now, you probably ask yourself, well, what are we doing? So Olivia is gonna share with you that we're gonna do an event where we're gonna work with you to get this certification done and achieved and completed. So, and it takes about an hour of your time. Typically we say about an hour, hour and a half, but we'll be done by before the end of the call. 
So the other certification that's out there on the government side is a federal one, a little more complex. I've seen people start this and it could take them up to, and not less than 90 days, but I have seen them take up to two years. So it's kind of like pick your poison, an hour or months. It's your call, right? Now, it does take a little bit of time because they do ask for a lot of paperwork. It is the federal government. So of course they're gonna ask for more stuff. You know, it is, it's obvious. So now let's talk about the supplier diversity. This is the corporate side. So switching over to the corporate side, the corporate side has a minority program. They have a women program. And of course they have LGBT and veterans. So you're like, okay. So the corporations, which is a different target, have their own separate certification. Now, that one can take up to about two, eight hours to complete. I had a millennial who did finish it in about an hour. So they did, they did type pretty fast. I'm gonna give them credit. I'm gonna give credit where credit is due. So they finished pretty fast, but the approval process does take about 90, about 60 to 90 days, depending on when their board approves it. Unfortunately, this particular certification on the corporate one, you have to pay annually to renew your certification as a national recognized company. So in order to get your national one, you do have to get, you do have to pay the third party who does a certification, whether it's the national minority, WeBank, or uh, the LGBT community, uh, Chamber of Commerce, you do have to, you have to pay them annually to get that certification. So on the utility side, and this is why I love government. So on the utility side, it's free. So you're like, well, wait a minute, let's talk about that one. Cause I like free, I'm sure you do too. So you're like, okay, this one's free on the utility side. We talked about Edison and the gas company. So to get that certification, again, they do minority, women, veterans, LGBT, and now uh, disabled people as well that recently added, and they have a goal of 25%. So you're like, hmm, let's learn more about that one. So the cool part about that one, that one takes about two hours, three hours to complete. The approval process takes about 30 days. I have seen it happen in 15, but I've also seen it happen in about 45. So it really just depends on workload. So already you can see why this is confusing. Now we're gonna speak about the pink elephant in the room because there is one pink elephant. Metro. So LA County Transit Metro has its own separate certification and they don't accept anybody's certification. They don't accept the county one. They don't accept the city one. They don't accept the national one. They certainly don't accept the CP, the California Public Center, and they definitely don't accept the one from the federal government. In order to do business with Metro, you have to do their certification. So that's the only downside to that is that they don't accept anybody else's except their own. So at this point, I'm going to pause because there's got to be questions. So Olivia, are there any questions? Uh, let me see. Nope, there's no questions. All right. Does anyone right. have questions that we could probably answer? Can you, you could write it in the chat or we could bring you live. Carlos, is there anyone? No, I have no one on my end. All right, okay. cool. You can well, continue. We're gonna, then we're gonna go ahead and move on. So. Okay, so we're going to go on and move on to who accepts the California Small Business Certification. Well, you have the Los Angeles School District that accepts that certification. You have this, this tiny place called LA County. They accept that certification. The city of Los Angeles accepts that certification through their program called the RAMP. So they have a program that they just rolled out, which is the Regional Alliance Marketplace for Procurement. And they accept that certification for the airport, for the Port of LA, as well as for DWP. So the also Metropolitan Water District also recognizes the, uh, the California DGS certification. The city of Long Beach, the Port of Long Beach also recognize that certification, as well as the Community College District, well, that would be like LA Trade Tech, East LA College, LA City College. So these are the community colleges in our, in our area that accept the certification. Pasadena also recognizes the DGS certification 
so that if you happen to be, if you've been happen to be in Pasadena, they also recognize that certification. Metrolink, which is not Metro, it's the train one, not the not the local transportation one, right? So Metrolink also accepts the certification. Now, new, not new, the Cal State system also accepts um, the certification. So that'd be like Cal State LA, Cal State Long Beach, uh, CSUN. So those are the school, the local community colleges that will accept it. The UC system also accepts the certification, which includes schools like UCLA, UC Santa Barbara, UC Riverside, UC, UC whatever, you put the name of the city behind it. So they also accept that certification. So as you can see, it's accepted by many local governments. So now let's talk about paperwork, because that's always something that comes up. And Olivia is going to have this and is going to send this to you. So if you look up at this eye chart of documents required for small business sole proprietors, it's only about four documents, roughly four. Now you're probably asking yourself, but I just started. Then you only need your EIN number to actually get your certification done because you just started. If you happen to be an LLC or a corporation, it's about eight documents. It's a little, it's a little more lengthy, but it's re, it, that's just the reality. And then if you look at the Public Utility Commission, which is for Edison and the gas company, the, this document's about 13, like 13 ish so you're like okay not too bad you got three on one end or three to four on one end you got 13 for the minority and women and lgbt through the california public utility commission now this one's going to blow your mind right here in a minute if you want to get your national certification national certification <laughs> that national certification is about 23 documents. If you happen to be an LLC or an S corporation. If you happen to be a woman owned business, it starts at sole proprietor 40 documents and can be as much as 68 documents to prove that you are a woman owned business. So you're, not, you're probably asking yourself, let me take a pause here for a moment. I'm going to get my national certification through any one of these two entities, 2368. Or you can do three, or you can do 13. Hmm, let me think about that one for a moment. And these are free. These two right here on the screen, they are free to achieve. Now, an organization like the Los Angeles Latino Chamber of Commerce is going to work with you to at a minimum get the small business one out of the way. So why don't we start with some basics? So then that way we can move on to some of the more complex ones, but you gotta start somewhere, right? And I know that uh, <laughs> I, I'm looking at Mary, Mary on, in, in, the, in the screen there, because I know at one point she was in a panic because she needed to get the certification here on the screen. And this one is one, we could have probably done this one that have been a little easier to deal with, but at the time, it's like some organizations say, no, we can't accept your state one. And no, we can't, but you have to understand where the writing in the wall is at, right? So at this point, we're gonna kind of like, as you can see, it's a lot of moving parts. You have your national certification for minorities, your LGBT one in the middle there, you have your women's certification, you have your public utility one, you have your Metro one, you have your veteran one, and then you have minority one. So at this point, Things are like, okay, Jack, this should, now it's clear. Where do you start? Well, you start with the easy one. You start with the golden ticket, which is the California Department of General Services. We get this one done and at least gets you in the door. It gets you going. So at this point, um, we're going to open it up to any questions. Hopefully things should be a little clear on what's going on. And so if anybody needs me to go back to any specific slides, I'm more than happy to do that. Are there any questions at this point? Yes. Yeah, there's there's one question um, from Joanne Johns. If the majority of our minority owned business is located in California, but we have other locations in other states, would we need more than one certification? So where's your company headquartered? Joanna, can you please, um, Carlos, can you admit 
Joanne? Yeah, Joanne should be able to just unmute herself. We're based in California. All right, so your headquarters is in California. Yes, okay. yes. So the majority of the owners, do they also live in California? Yes. All right. So as long as the majority of the owners live in California, you're fine. So on the now, are you trying to get your national certification or your, any one of these local ones? My guess would be local for now. Local for now. That's a yep. great. That's a great step, by the way. That's a, <laughs> that's a good answer. That's a good answer. That's good. A good answer. That's a great answer, actually. So I hope everybody took note because you do the national ones a little more complex, right? So now here's where you want to be. The where this is where the weeds are at. Okay. So now is your company a sole proprietor, a LLC, or a corporation? Sole prop sole proprietor okay that's really good news so if you're a sole prop and you haven't made the leap to to corporation or to an llc as a sole prop you're only looking at you the owner so that's the advantage because it's just looking at your individual entity right because it's under your name your dba now if you're gonna if you have multiple owners i would recommend that you consider doing the LLC step and that way you can have documented who owns what operation and who's in charge of what it just operationally just makes it a little cleaner because if you decide down the road that you want to get your either the one through utility commission or you want to get the one at the national level they're going to ask for board minutes they're going to ask for our notes they're going to ask for operating agreement they're going to ask for a lot of details that unfortunately many times most businesses don't have some of the documentation they ask for here, which I always recommend if you're a sole prop, I would recommend that you start with the California DGS one first, just to kind of get your feet wet and start organizing yourself before you make the leap to the national or you know, the local minority one. Okay, thank you very much. I mean, I Alrighty. And then sense. we have um, one more question from Juan, which mm -hmm. departments will provide a pricing benefit for DGS certified small businesses, like pricing advantage in percentage? That is a great question. Juan, that's a great question. So not all, not, not everything's equal, okay, just to be fair. So it really depends on the policy of that city. So I'm gonna pick on a couple. State of California does have a preference for small businesses, but only in a RFP, which is a bid or an RFB, which is an actual solicitation. So in those scenarios, I believe it's up to somewhere between seven and 15%. So it really depends. The County of LA, that one is very specific. They have a 15% preference, but it's all transactions from, uh, I believe it's $5,000 all the way up to $150,000. So it's a, it's a range. Now, some cities, like if your business happens to be headquartered in Long Beach, I believe they give a 10% preference. Pasadena, I believe their number, I want to say 10 also, but I, I think eight's on more right. So it just really depends on you know where you're at. So LAUSD, for example, does give a preference if you happen to be a small business and registered with them. And it's anywhere between 3% to as much as 15%, but it's on the scoring side. So it's really more, it's really the kind of like, how do you do one versus the other? So there is a preference, but not everybody does it. So I, I believe the city of Los Angeles, I believe there's a 7% currently. I know they're talking about increasing it to about 15 to match the county. So I think what you have to look at is you wanna start with small deals. I would recommend that, that you start with smaller deals. So, um, so here's what I would tell you. Most government agencies and even corporations will do what they call low value transactions. So those are opportunities that don't necessarily go out to bid. So what does that mean? So let's, for example, I wanna buy, I wanna buy some, I wanna buy a mouse, right? So I wanna buy a mouse. 
doesn't make sense for me to fill out that much paperwork to buy one mouse. Probably not. So what I'll do is I'll have a credit card where I'm out of a purchase order where I can buy 20 of these, or I need to buy, I want to buy 50 of these or 100 of these, right? So do I want to go through the process of putting out a bid, or can I use a credit card or a purchase order to buy stuff? And those don't go out to bid. Those are just smaller transactions that happen every minute of the day. In fact, they happen every second of the day. Every second of the day, there are small deals out there that are happening. Any other questions? Um, no, not for now. We can continue. Well, I have a question. Oh, sure. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm a financial advisor, and we actually got a contract uh, for a product that's, a, that's for an employee benefit. And I was actually trying to reach out to people I know in Southern Edison and trying to figure out how to get to offer this product through the employees. Does it make sense? Does, does being certified also help someone like myself, who's sole prop, trying to get to uh, offer an employee benefit product? Yeah, so the answer is yes. So it really depends. Because we look at it this way, right? And maybe this might make a little more sense. If you are, in fact, a certified business or minority-owned business, if you're looking at Edison specifically, you have to remember that those companies buy multi-million dollar contracts. So they usually don't go through a broker. They'll usually put it out to bid. And those larger opportunities will go to the big company. Let's be honest. So uh, now. If you're going to offer some kind of a training or some kind of a, a program that they currently don't offer through their current provider, then you could do go that route in order to provide something that their current vendor doesn't offer them. Now, in the insurance space, that can be challenging. And because I've dealt with a couple of insurance guys that are saying, well, wait a minute, well, I'm a broker for company X or company Y. And well, how do I get in? Well, you get in by starting with some smaller opportunities and it may start with some educational component of why they should even consider talking to you. So okay. it's like, kind of like, you have to decide, is it more important for me to get that one deal or come in as a trainer and now you're getting repeated revenue as a trainer versus that one, one and done? All right, thank you. I hope that makes sense. It did. And then um, one last question, Anna asked, uh, uh, are they getting the PowerPoint presentation or do they need to take notes? I did respond that it'll be available on demand uh, for viewing on our website as of tomorrow, but will we be getting a copy of your presentation, Jack? So no, it'll basically be the, my recommendation is as you're, um, as you're doing the, taking your notes and when you're watching the video, I would just take notes of that you have there. What mm -hmm. I am going to be sending Olivia is a step-by-step -step on how to register with the city of Los Angeles, which is our new ramp platform. So I do have that. So I'll be sending that because that's property of the city. So I'll be sending that. So that way you guys can have that for the city of Los Angeles and their new uh, ramp platform. So I'll send you guys that. Olivia, I'll send that to you and then you can send it out to the group. Mm -hmm. The other thing we're going to be sending out to the group is going to be documents required. So if you decide that, hey, I want to get certified as a small business or I want to get certified as a minority, then Olivia's going to have that. I believe, I believe you're going to talk about which one we're going to do first, correct? Correct. And then I'll share that at the end of the session. So right. it's a flyer and we'll talk about it at the end. All right, cool. I mean, I'm... I'm, as far as I'm done, I mean, as far as where I'm at, my part of the presentation is done. I wanted to make sure, and you know what, by a quick show of hands, so I'm going to stop sharing screens here. And I know you know how you guys all know how to use the emoji thing. So by a quick show of hands, um, was this clear to you as far as how this all works? Thumbs up or a quick yes, it's clear now. Thumbs up there. I got one thumbs up. All right, cool. I just was curious to see if everybody felt like it's got, it was a little more clear because I know it's confusing. So, I mean, at this point, 
I wanted to make sure that you got, and it's clear that this is not, it's not as bad as everyone makes it out to be, okay? So with that said, I'm gonna hand the floor back over to Olivia if no one has any more questions. All right. I have a general question. I guess if we have additional, who do we reach out to? Or do we, can we talk to someone at the chamber or? Reach or out we, for what? If we have additional questions after this. Oh, um, Jack, would you like them to call you directly? Yeah, no. So the easiest way to get a hold of me is um, my, you, you can actually email me and say, hey, I attended the LA Latino Chamber of Commerce event. And so my direct email address is Jack, J A C K, dot Ochoa, O C H O A, at infinity with the Y, G P C, that's golf Paul Charlie dot com. Thank you. Make sure you mention that you showed up to this event, okay? And I guess we don't have any other questions. So um, Wait, can you repeat the email address? Sure. So again, um, it's jack.ochoa at infinitygpc.com. So I'm going to put it in the chat too while Olivia's talking. Thank you, Jack. All righty. So uh, thank you, Jack, for your, oh, Mina has a question. Mina, you have a question? I do, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, can you hear me okay too? Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great. Uh, hi, Jack. Hello. Um, wanted to inquire with respect to the DGS uh, certification. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm due after three years. Is that process the same or is there a shorter version of that or any red certification? Is it the same long deal? No, it's actually shorter. That's oh. a great question, by the way. So if you're doing the DGS one, it's going to be, they're going to ask you for your taxes for the last two years, and that's it. If you do the minority one, they're going to ask you for your taxes, and they are going to ask you for your, I believe, your statement of information if you're a corporation, because they want to make sure you're still in good status with the state. Yeah, no, I'm a sole prop. So that would, would yeah, that so would require just the two years of taxes? Two years tax, that's all they're going to ask for. Okay. And then the most really recent. Quick. It's like maybe 15 minutes of actual work. Okay. Is that a service that you still provide, by the way? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I can help with the renewal. Yep. All right. That'll be great. Thank you very much. And again, if you're with, if you're a member of the LA Latino Chamber of Commerce, I can work that out with Olivia. Okay. Very well. Then we will do that because I am a member. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, yeah, I'm waiting for any last minute questions. All right, so um, thank you, Jack, for um, your expertise and kind of sharing all the, um, you know, the differences between all the certifications. So I want to thank you once again. And, you know, we already addressed a couple of questions, but what I'd like to do is invite you to next week's webinar session, which is the Fair Chance Hiring, and it's how to hire those um, within the state of California. Also, uh, so we'll be diving more into workforce. Uh, Carlos, can you share the image real quickly? So you know what that event looks like or the flyer. So there we go. So that's the um, event for next Wednesday at 9 a.m. And then if you're not yet a member of the chamber and you are interested in membership, we have a membership drive going on right now for $105. That's for uh, annual uh, general membership that's valued at 250. And what that includes is a certification. So you do not pay for an additional um, certification because it is sponsored through our um, generous partners and sponsors. So, so that's a big advantage and just the membership itself. I mean, if you were to go and get certified somewhere else, it's more than the cost of our membership. And with that, you know, you get grant opportunities, you get to attend some of our events. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, value into being a member of the chamber. And then one thing that I didn't give to Carlos was I want to touch upon the, um, the webinar that we'll be having with, uh, let me share screen real quickly, uh, with, there we go, uh, with, with Jack next week. So let me do this real quickly, share. 
Alrighty. Okay. There we go. So this is the small business certification class that will be taking place on February 23rd. So if you are a member, there's no cost to you, but these are the requirements. So every member that wants to be certified needs to be vetted. We do have a committee that reviews all the applications. And here are the guidelines. You must be a member in good standing. You could be a new member. Uh, must have participating in today's session. You must have a headquarters in Los Angeles County, have an active uh, federal EIN or social security number, taxes for businesses for the last two years, and you must submit your capability statement to, um, to us no later than February 15, and that's to info at lalcc.org, along with um, the information that Jack will be sending me. I'll also provide copy of this flyer so you have it on your radar. So, um, you know, there is value to what we do. And, you know, Mina, you mentioned about being recertified. Check in with me. We'll add you to the list and we'll make special accommodations uh, for you to renew your um, your certification with DGS. And I know there was, um, Carla had reached out to me by text and, you know, she's also on the list to get certified. We looked at her capability statement um, yesterday, which she submitted because we were talking about certification. I said, hey, hold on, you know, um, through our membership, you're able to get certified. So so that's a good deal. So, you know, don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Connect with us. You know, we really are here to serve you, the public and the Latino small business community. So on that note, I'd like to thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Jack for um, being part of the chamber and everyone who is here. So if you have any last minute questions, um, Please let us know now, and then that I will. A, be, I see a question in the chat, Olivia. So real fast, okay. there's a question in the chat about seven months. There we go. Yeah, remember, let me see. So remember, uh, you only have to be in business one day to get certified. So seven so months. So the two-year tax return doesn't apply, correct? Yeah, to him it doesn't apply. So okay. don't worry about. It. Okay. All right, and who's iPhone? I don't know. So how can we send you the info? Uh, my name is Taisha Jackson Wise. And I received the email. Okay. I can right. put my uh, email again in the chat. Yeah, that would be great. And then we can, uh, where do I purchase the membership for the organization online? Any special codes? There's no special codes. It's, um, I'll be reaching out to you. Who is this? Oh, Wong. All right. Um, expect a call from me in like the next 10 minutes or someone from our office and we can connect for you to get membership. T. Jackson, Wise, iCloud. All right, let me just take copy of the chat and I think we're good to go. All righty. Uh, real quick, would you, you'll be sending out the flyer that was, uh, that Jack was on mm -hmm. so we can know where to get the statement and whatever we have to fill out. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Alrighty, so that's it for today. Thank you for joining us and we're here for you.